I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community? Uh, peace, everybody. Uh, Why have we not oh, turned those riches you know into what? wealth to develop our on. community? We got some extra things going on over here. Peace, everybody. Uh, well, I have been oh, turn those bridges you know, okay. Hold on, we are having a little technical difficulty. I don't know why I'm showing everybody. up everywhere. Uh, okay. All the voices. I keep hearing Professor James Small voice speaking. All right, peace family. I am so I'm so excited. You know, I, I know you guys are like, I'm sick of this woman being so excited because every time somebody comes on, I'm so excited. But I am. I am. I'm just going to, you know what? I've just already decided I live an exciting life <laughs> where I'm always excited about things, big things and little things. But this is definitely a big thing. Um, I'm so honored to um, finally um, sit down with with this guest tonight. And before we get started and before I introduce her, just some housekeeping things, family, please like and share this video, okay? It's very important that um, we get the word out, um, you know, to everyone. And so if you could, uh, you know, like, you know, just literally cut and paste, send it to at least three people that you know um, so that they can also receive this information. And family, if you are not signed up to our um, our uh, newsletter, Happy Film, go to happyfilm.com, hit the Get Connected button, and get connected. That way you always get, like as soon as I push live or Taiki pushes live, then you automatically get an alert that we are um, bringing you another exciting um, uh, host on Happy Talks. Or sometimes you just have other news that we're announcing. So family, please check out happyfilm.com. Also, you know, Kwanzaa come, is coming around and we have some, um, we have a clearance sale going on. I have my Nubia shirt on today. Um, and that's one of the beautiful shirts you can get at a discount um, on our website. So you want to go ahead and head over there, happyfilm.com. We have everything else. We have uh, copies of our DVDs. You can stream um, all of our three documentaries. So um, please, um, you know, know that uh, we are definitely, you know, we have everything covered. And family, if you could just um, give me like a high five in the chat, if you can hear me, because I'm getting a couple of text messages saying that you guys can't hear me. Just so I know that you guys can, um, that everything's coming through. I don't know why. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful. Thank you, Mahita, <laughs> for being the first. Because I was sitting, I was like, "Wait, are we live?" But we are live. Okay. Great. Yay. Okay. All right. And so, let me just say peace out to Imani Johnson. Thank you, Monty Johnson, for blowing up my um, text message right before we get ready to get on with uh, Reverend um, Nafisa. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> um, and so shout out to Imani. I see um, Chad is in the house. Joy Spears. Great. My man, Lucio, um, is in the house as well. Oh, Consuela. That's what's up. Great. Thank you. Oh, and um, John Henry Staples. This is our elder. You know, it is always a good thing when the eldest of the elders get on to your live stream. So um, peace to John Henry Staples out in Florida. Um, so happy that you are with us tonight. Um, and uh, Omi, uh, oh, I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, I'll say Miss Camille. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for um, signing on. Okay. So family, you know, um, we have a couple things going on uh, before I bring in um, uh, Miss, Miss Lovely Reverend Nafisa. We are going to Egypt. We're going to Egypt 
in February, our first uh, trip that we had sold out. But, 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 but we were able to actually come up with another trip within the side, with, with in, inside the current trip. So initially we had a 10 day trip scheduled, okay? And that sold out, but we were able to now create an eight day trip. So you still get all the, the goodies of, um, of coming on the 10 day trip. There's just like a couple places you won't go, but you all, but you still get access to all the economic classes. You get access to the Hoppy Gala. Um, you also get uh, access to, um, we're gonna have like some special uh, exercising sort of meditation that we're gonna have on the ship. And we have our own ship this time. So there's no one else. It's just exclusively for our group. So that's going to be, uh, you know, a lot of fun. And those dates are February uh, 17th through the 24th. Right there is Discover the Origins of Economics in Egypt with Hoppy. And so, um, family, if you're just remotely thinking about coming, <laughs> you might want to just go ahead and put down your deposit. You can visit our website. You can either go to happyfilm.com or you can actually just go to aquettours.com and, um, you know, get more information about the trip. There's a phone number. If you have any questions, you can call myself or Ty Key. You can email us and the links are, you know, right on there. If you want to um, go ahead and put down your deposit and secure your spot. This will be in February, February 17th through the 24th. Uh, so, you know, this is, uh, we had Professor James Small on a couple of weeks ago talking about how going to Egypt and it is an investment in yourself. And, um, you know, I can't wait to ask our guest because our guest has a special name of the organization that she runs, um, which all ties in. You'll know what I mean when I bring her in. But, um, you know, right here, family, this is like a mixture of history and the Tom Joyner cruise. So you're going to do a little partying, but you're going to do all, you're also going to learn a lot. And it's beautiful because of, you know, the whole networking piece. And so we're asking people who are coming with us, if they have like businesses or if they're even thinking of an idea, whatever it is, wherever stage they are in that process for them to come so that they can then, um, you know, network with other people that are trying to do the same thing, because we really are about getting, you know, getting our economic groove on. And that's what this whole trip is about. So family, if you can make it happen right there, iCatTours.com, check it out. All right. Okay, I think I think that's enough little business there. All right, family. So you know what? This is um, this is really exciting for me to um, have Reverend Afisa Sharif on. And before she comes on, I'm just going to tell you a little short little story as to how um, how I know her. So I have a, a a really good friend, Elena. Elena, like years ago, used to do these cleanses and. You know, I and, and I think that when I when I think about Elena, Elena is a person who she, you know, when you look at her, she's like full of light, you know, just good energy, but just a really good person. And so when she's telling me about these uh these cleanses, I was like, okay, you know what, I think I want to go. Now at this point, um, this was you know, before COVID, and we would go to like a space in Harlem and actually uh Reverend Nafisa was there, and so she would have, you know, um we would, you know, do the cleanse, the orientation, all, you know, you know, with each other in a space. And so the first time I went, I was like, oh, I was so excited. And I mean, after the orientation, I was like, yes. But let me tell you, that was probably the hardest thing I ever did in my damn life. And I, I, I was, I was like, oh my god, I couldn't even keep up. I, I, I couldn't. I was eating cookies in the pantry. Like this was just like, oh my god, this was like horrible. But the beautiful thing about these cleanses is that. You know, she does them every season. <laughs> so I think the next season I was like, no, I don't think I can even do this. But then I it eventually came back and it got better and better and better. And so that started my relationship with her. Now I want to fast forward to like a couple of weeks ago. I'm sitting on the one train going to work on the subway here in New York City. And I'm listening to um, and don't judge me. I was listening to Too Short, Blow the Whistle. Just saying, yeah, yeah. And then Lauren Hill came on. I got a fine peace of mind, which I proceeded to cry <laughs> for like, I, it had to be five to like five to eight stops. And afterwards, I got myself together and I texted 
Reverend Nafisa and told her, I just, I just loved her and thanked her for allowing God to use her. And because she has done that, she then is able to help everyone else. And so family, without ado, I want to introduce you to Reverend Nafisa Sharif. Hey, Reverend Nafisa. Hey, Felicia. <laughs> Thank you for that lovely introduction. You know, I, I, I almost always say, there but for the grace of God go I. And so your introduction of me allowing God to use me, that's exactly right. Exactly right. And so here I am. Use me. Yes, <laughs> yes. So family, um, this, uh, you know, even like figuring out like what we're going to talk about was difficult <laughs> because I was like, there's so much stuff that uh, that you can talk about. If you can just first just it just um, give us an introduction of your organization. I can do that. Well, hello, everyone, and um, really excited that so many of you have joined us. Uh, I got the information today and blasted it out to as many of you as I can. And so Felicia was seeing names like Consuelo, my sister, and Imani, who we, she knows from the volunteers. So family, friends, e-blast, uh, Instagram, all of you who are here, thank you for coming um, and supporting me in this effort. Uh, entering the Holy of Holies, as you know, or many people will know when they go to Egypt, Kemet with Taki and with uh, Felicia, is actually the first um, room that's built in any of the major temples. And so all of the facade and all of the beautiful columns and all of the artistry comes much later. So the very first room is the room that will house the statue to the deity that this temple is being dedicated to. And so there is a stone that's placed there. And then there is the actual statue. Once the temple is completed only, and I'm speaking traditionally, only the Pharaoh, king or queen and the highest of the high priests can enter the Holy of Holies because it's so sacred. People um, become unraveled going into this very high sacred place. Dr. Ben used to say to his tours and to many people, don't go in, don't desecrate the Holy of Holies. And I completely understood that. But my guidance kept saying to call this the Holy of Holies and the organization. And I was so distraught because I didn't want to go against Dr. Ben and what he was saying. And Dr. Ben Yohakanen is was one of our foremost leaders in um, archaeology and in Black history and in Egyptology. So how could I go against him? And one day, like you, Felicia, I was sitting on a train after coming out of a metaphys metaphysical bookstore and just looking around the store, I didn't know much. This book literally fell off the shelf into my hands. And so I said, okay, I'm gonna buy this book. It's not a big book. I bought it and I'm on the train, page one, two, three and enter the Holy of Holies. And I'd like you just busted out in tears, crying, crying, crying. And I knew in that moment, that was my aha moment. Mm. I was going to name my organization, Entering the Holy of Holies, but with great respect and love and understanding. So first the understanding of what Dr. Ben was saying. There are two different sides to the Nile or to the Hapi River. The west side is where all the pharaohs and the queens and kings and queens are buried. The east side is where the temples of worship are. So my reference is to where the temples of worship are. Dr. Ben was referencing with the Holy of Holies, there's gold, there's food, there's weapons, there's people to protect the spirit of the deceased pharaoh, king or queen. And so to go in would be to desecrate this sacred space. On the east bank, on the east side of the river, is where you go to worship. So again, you're not even allowed in. Only the high priest, king or queen, could go in. And to do what? To pray, to meditate, to commune with God, to make offering, to receive guidance, 
And then they would back out, bowing to the statue, mm -hmm. and wipe the earth where their footprints were so none of the energy would be disturbed. And when they left, they would lock the door and then use their seal to let people know that they were there. So this became increasingly clear to me that only when the student is ready, that phrase, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Mm. This teacher appears to bring you into the holy of holies of your own self, the inner sanctum of your own heart, to be able to discover your relationship with yourself, each other, and especially with God. Mm. So I'm going to take this moment to say the title of this interview, this moment is the power of healing, uh, self-healing. And I was thinking about that and saying, more than the power of self-healing is the power of self-becoming. And why I say that difference is because, you know, we think of healing, we think we're cured. We think we're, we're done. We, we've, you know, we're the, we've cut ourselves and put a little ointment on and now the skin is fine. And, we're done, ta -da. but there are many moments in life where we will never be done. Mm. And you especially feel this with the loss of a child or a parent or a loved one, you know, loss of life or loss of a job, loss of a relationship. We learn to move through, but we're not done, we're not cured, yeah? So how do we live with ourselves and each other when we're still healing? So I don't say we're healing so much as we are becoming the true essence of holy life that we are. And so as we do this work, so here's Felicia telling on us and telling on herself how hard this, these cleanses are. It's not just that we let go of food because you actually eat quite a bit. You let go of food over time. So you don't starve. We don't start drinking water right away. You slowly, slowly by day seven, eight and nine, you're doing liquids, not nine days of liquids, you can actually eat quite a bit. But what you do let go of right away is whatever the theme is, so the upcoming cleanse, the winter solstice cleanse, become fearless and free. You're going to have to really look into yourself, your holy of holies of your heart, to see where you are not free. Mm. And that's where the pain is. And we don't always want to look. But then you take this cleanse that you think, oh, it's going to be easy. And what makes it hard is that there is a spiritual, emotional component to the physical component. It's hard enough to not be eating all the fun food that you want to eat, the cookies and the meat and the this. And then we have to go in and every day, every day confront ourselves about our fear. And fear is the number one thing that stops us from doing anything. And so I'm like, yep, let's do it. Because without doing it, and then we have three other uh, themes as well, healing your heart and confronting your anger and rage and forgiving abandonment and rejection. These are huge, huge um, emotions that we carry. And so I have a friend, Lydia, who likes when I talk about the cousins, because we have one thing that we're looking at, fear, but then all these other emotions come up, anger, and control, and bitterness and resentment and guilt and shame. They're not invited to the party, but they come anyway because you can't just clear one part of yourself. You, clear, you feel, you heal all of you and allow it. You know, it's the allowing. If you click on the uh, winter solstice cleanse, it should take you um, to the actual page of the winter solstice cleanse. So scroll down to I think there will be four cleanses all the way down. Keep going, keep going. Where it says winter solstice cleanse, click that. Mm -hmm. And that'll take you to the event page where you will read more about the cleanse itself. And then if you wish, you can purchase one of the packages. We have three packages. The first is an individual package um, where you, you do the cleanse on your own. We send you the handbook. It's a 34 page handbook that guides you every single step of the way, day one through day nine and you get a supply bag from us with all the things that you'll need to make your cleanse successful, but you move at your own pace. 
Okay, wait, 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 wait. Okay, 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 okay. That little reverence fee stuff. No, what have you? We not we we just you just kind of skimming by some stuff here. Let me just just pull pull right there. Well, well, you pulled this up, so I thought I was supposed to talk. Yes, yes, but no. (laughs) Okay, so I you know what these cleanses, guys. Um, so I I would I, I I want you guys to understand the the love that goes into this whole process. You know, I've, I've, I haven't really met like a a person who is really full of love all the time and in the details of things. And so, you know, you, 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 you get this, you sign up for the cleanse, but then comes this beautiful package of goodies. Okay. With a handwritten note from her. Thanking you for being part of the cleanse and what to expect. And in the cleanse, you get everything you need. It's not like, oh, okay, just do this little steps. No, no, no. You get the sage. You get the bath salt. And the, and the salts are in the beautiful package with roses. <laughs> like, this is like, this is no joke. Okay. But it's, but this is the essence of, of who Reverend Nafisa is and what, and how she's started this organization out of love. And so, you know, these cleanses, whereas, you know, you guys can go here and I put the link in the um, it, it's in the chat, wherever you're looking at us, you can just click on and go right there and look at this. But this cleanse is so much more than um, than just a cleanse, like, like she's explaining. But I just want want you guys to understand the the preparation and the love that um, really goes into these details that sets you up, because for some I know, for, like for myself, I had never experienced that type of love in the details until I met Reverend Nafisa. Because even when you speak and she gives you a chance and you're speaking, you know, and you know, she's like, okay, your turn. Okay. You know, I heard what you said. Like she really acknowledges and she knows that you're there. <laughs> and so I just wanted to say that because, you know, it's important to, um, yes, Lori. And um, shout out to Lori. She's going with us um, to Egypt. But um, yes, it, it, this is very good. So continue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. What, what would you like me to pick up on? Where should I go from, from well, here? Well, so I, I have a, um, a question about the cleanse. How did you even decide to do cleanses? And why, um, and why would season changes? Like, you know, what was your reasoning for that? Well, thank you for that question. It's a great question. Um, as all things in life un- unfold and evolve, if you look over my left shoulder, on the, it's mirroring, you should see a picture of Gurmai Chidvalasananda, um, that lady in orange, as Felicia once referenced her. She is an enlightened guru. She is the spiritual head of the Siddha Yoga Path. And she has been my guru since 1999. Again, guru is a Sanskrit way, word. It means teacher at its most basic translation. But then you have different levels of gurus, and she is at the highest level, what they call a Shakti Pat, bestowing guru who can enlighten you just by being in her presence. And so I was about to teach a dance class an African dance class. Many of you know that I teach African dance as well. And this was maybe 11 years ago. And I'm standing up, getting ready to start the class. And there's only a handful of people in the class. And I hear Guru Mai say very clearly in my ear, as if she was standing next to me, do the summer solstice cleanse. It's time to cleanse. Do the summer solstice cleanse. And at that time, I didn't even know or pay much attention to the summer solstice. So I had to go home and look it up and do the summer solstice, okay. And then the next class, she says, and now invite your your people. I'm like, who are my people? And I'm standing there in front of class like, oh, these are my people. And so I just did an open invitation, anybody who wanted to participate. And about five, seven of us uh, said yes, one, two, three, four, five, six of us, six, maybe a seventh, but I think it was only six of us who said yes. And we had a little folder with maybe three sheets of paper. And over time, I realized, okay, we need to grow. We need to do another season and then another and another. And the more I did with myself, the more things unfolded and the more I wanted to share. 
I, I do want to pause myself and say thank you, Felicia, for your wonderful words. I do take great pride in everything that I do, um, whether it's simple or ornate. Uh, and mostly because I want you, whoever you are, to feel very comfortable and at peace with me and with entering the Holy of Holies. You have to feel safe. You have to feel that you can trust me and the people who are working with me and the organization, or you won't heal. You'll only open up but so much, or you'll only do but so much. So you have to feel right away, and I can't make you feel any way, but I can only present to you, this is who I am, you know, and you're right. Um, People say to me all the time, gosh, you listen so well. I had to learn to listen, learn not to interrupt people, learn to look at people right in their eyes, let them speak, yes. you know, and really repeat back. We have a friend who's on the call, Sadaka. She would always say, so what you're saying is, and then she would repeat exactly what you say. And I, I picked that up from her many years ago. Like, oh, that's so good because most of us are not listening. We are just waiting to interject our own thoughts but to really repeat what someone said almost verbatim means you have to be listening to what they're saying. You have to want to hear what they're saying and you have to want to respond to what they're saying, not what you think you want to say, what you want, somebody else. Mm -mm. So that has become, and then in seminary, they taught us how to really listen, including to look for what people don't say. That was the hardest thing. And I think that's what you, what amazes you the most when I'm like, okay, Felicia, and you're like, are you in my head? How do you know this stuff? What? Because I'm, I'm looking and listening to what you're not saying yeah. in addition to what you are saying. And for everybody who doesn't know me, this isn't to be intrusive, this is to help you. This is to help you to see what you don't see yet. My job is to simply help you to become aware of yourself. Once you are aware of your pattern, then you have the, the will, the way, maybe the power to change it. And that comes with time. That's why this is a practice. You have to go back over and over and you have to see oh, what I'm doing. Oh, you make that correction within yourself. And so it takes some time. We, we look at our watch. Am I enlightened yet? I mean, I've been doing this 10 years. Come on now. <laughs> and surely we grow, we become better at who we are and what we're doing, of course. But there is also this great surrender. And for people of color, that word surrender could be like, oh, you know, hands up, surrender, versus really submitting and letting go. Because we want what we want we want it. Everybody does. And really to listen to the voice of God, first of all, requires stillness. And we have so many distractions. We live in New York City, so the city that never sleeps, right? But just in the world, with technology, we can stay up 24 hours a day and, and be doing something. So to, to take time in your day to have a ritual, I like to say you have a ritual in the morning, how you start your day and how you end your day. You didn't ask me about this piece, but in becoming who you are, you start your day in prayer and meditation, whether it's five minutes or 50 minutes, but you start with acknowledging the life force that you are, God, the gratitude. I like to awaken the divine intelligence in all my cells. And come on, let's get ready for the world. Your mm. cells already know what to do. You think you're telling the world, mm -mm, you cut yourself again back to healing. Your body knows how to heal itself. Certainly there are some things we need assistance with in the medical profession, but for the most part, your body already knows what to do. We don't do those things all the time, but to get ready, come on, let's go. And then when we go to bed, please don't fall asleep at your computer or watching TV. Cut off your, your phone, your computer, your television. I'm gonna say 11 o'clock. Take a shower, iron your clothes, whatever you need to do for the next day and then go to bed with some soft music. Maybe you've burned a candle, a little bit of incense. Don't keep the candle burning, but just you've prepared your, for your sleep. And most people don't. And then they wonder why their, their brain is always active and then they wake up in the middle of the night. Sometimes there's a lot going on energetically, astrologically, I get that. Moon is full, moon is new, okay. But for other, 
for most people with this technology, you're, you're on it until you fall asleep. Mm -hmm. So you really want to prepare yourself for your dream state in the same way as you do for your awakened state. And then even just to the shower is not just to, you know, to wash the dirt off, but to wash the day off. Maybe mm. on that train, there was an incident, you know, they're, they're saying now, I don't know why they're saying it, but they're choosing to say someone got hit by a train today. So there's delays on the trains in New York. Well, that's so devastating. Oh, you just grip just to hear that. But you carry that with you unless you wash it off. Maybe you had an interaction at work or even with a best friend. You want to clear that. So you, you, you become your master. You don't heal to it. You become the master by being aware of yourself and making very conscious choices about how you choose to live your life. And the hard part, Felicia, and for everyone is not to get discouraged. And we all will, but not to stay there get discouraged, you know, have a couple of days of eating ice cream and pigging out and vegging out and then take a bath, take a bath, start again, say some prayers, go to church, go to the masjid, go to the temple, go hug a tree, something to reconnect you with source. Mm -hmm. You know, what we call God for me is always the very highest vibration of unconditional love. Love that does not have judgment or criticism or expectation or attachment. And those are the concepts that we can't even speak, much less live in this world. Let's look at the state of our world right now. This is not a state of unconditional love for many people, what we're seeing and hearing in the world. And so we have to become that. This is Gandhi, right? Become what you want to see in the world. And this is Martin Luther King. Like, it's easy to be, you know, the light when it's, everybody's being the light, now be the light when it's dark and hard and chaotic. Yeah. yeah. So. Mm. Ah, okay. You, he said so much, you said a lot of things that we gotta, we gotta tap, just, you gotta go back for them for a second because I want, I don't, I want to make sure people don't forget. I mean, or or that they don't like they don't miss this piece. So, this whole idea of um, of like a spiritual practice, because I, I family, I want you guys to know that, um, and you know, Reverend Nafisa does a lot of things, and one of the other pieces is this whole idea of helping you develop a spiritual practice. And why, um, like you, 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 you kind of talked about some stuff in terms of what you know a spiritual practice can contain, but why is it important for people to have a spiritual practice? I want to say because without it, you're just all over the place. You know, most of us pray when we're in need. Mm. And there are different kinds of prayer, you know, when we want to bargain with God, please just give me this and I'll never do that again. Or we're pleading with God to please heal this person. Don't let them die. Or again, pleading, give me money so I can. And even joyful. Thank you, God. Thank you so much. You need a practice to separate yourself from all the external activity, to quiet your mind, and to go deeper into yourself, back into the Holy of Holies. You can do this. I do it walking down the street and I do it on the train, but it's very difficult. It is difficult and you have to be aware. You have to be where you're crossing the street and you're too close to the edge of the train station. So it's not desired to do it completely when you're outside or driving a car but you need that silence, you need that stillness to even hear your own self think, you know, and then also to more than think, to feel. So when we meditate, when we hold still, this is really when God is speaking to us. How many times in workshop or in one of the cleanses in a meditation, you went in with the thought of one thing, but then something else completely was revealed to you. You thought it was gonna be this, but it was that. And you're so surprised, not just you, but so many people 
but that's because we are our minds are still thinking and saying this is what it, this is what we think it is as opposed to just opening your heart and letting God speak to you or your inner sanctum speak to you how are you feeling your feelings are your biggest key to anything how do you feel not so much what do i think about how do you feel about something and most of us push our feelings down so like you said it was very hard that first cleanse and you almost didn't come back but you did come back and you all say the same thing you all leave and then you come back because you really know there's something here mm -hmm. that you need to become that which you say you want in the world or want to be in the world and so like anything that's new felicia there's going to be an adjustment there's going to be some resistance and pushback Mm. Even when you say, yes, this is exactly what I want. There's a <laughs> phrase, if you knew what it would take to be a 10th degree initiate, you would never become a first degree initiate. You're not supposed to know. It's supposed to be alluring and great and bring you forward to get, get, get started. Just get in the game. Put your right foot forward. And then like, oh my goodness, holy, because what is this? But you realize when you move through that, that you're more free you're more happy, you're more clear. And this is why you need a practice. You need some kind of ritual that helps you to deal with your day in a way that is beyond just you. You know, again, in the West, we have this mindset that we are in control, we do everything. And in many ways we do. And then something like the quarantine and COVID comes in and God says, oh really? Let me tell you who's large and in charge. Stay home. There's nowhere to go but to surrender to this. And how many people discovered who they were and who they were not during the cleanse? How many people separated from 30 year marriages? How many people came together after just a few months? Like, there's nothing to wait for. How many people transitioned? How many people? had to start new kinds of jobs or be creative because their old job was gone. How many of us lost everything? You just bought the new house, the new car, the new condo, and you also lost your job. Everything just gone. And so you need a practice, you need some kind of ritual to help you through these moments because your, your own brain, your own mind is not enough. It's not. So. Mm. And you know what? Um, also, family, uh, Reverend Nafisa, she actually does um, meditation. Her meditations are no joke. And she does them. Uh, you can tune into her um, her IG and, and it's on Facebook as well, too. Yes, because yes. I, I usually mm -hmm. I, I catch you on IG. And the beautiful thing about it is that, you know, it's still there. And so anytime you know you need a meditation, all I, I literally just scroll. I just pick one. Because whatever you need, it's going to be the one that you pick. Um, and you take us through um, the chakra system. Like, it, they're really good. So family, um, and you know what, that's, let me see, your, your handle for, um, I'm sorry, I'm going to make sure I let everybody know that your handle for social media, it's Entering the Holy of Holies. Correct. Yeah, at Instagram, correct. at Entering the Holy of Holies. Okay. All right. And on Facebook, it's my personal page. So it's just Nafisa Sharif on Facebook. And I do them simultaneously, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, from 8 to 8.30. They're free. You're always welcome to make a donation. Uh, you know, and they started, they started during COVID, March 2020. And we all were just devastated and afraid. And I asked God, what could I possibly do? You know, and I had to ask my daughter, Majita. She was the one who said, like, okay, mommy, you could do this. Put your phone here, open your camera here, play your music here, Aww. and go live at the same time. Like, I had no idea what Zoom was, or I didn't even have a camera. My sister, my sister brought me a, a, a camera, another brother Joe brought me a microphone. Like, okay, here we go. But that was March 2020, and here it is many, year, many years later, we're still doing them. I did them every day, seven days a week, because we just needed it. And so many people would respond, thank you so much, just you're helping me move through this unprecedented time, as they would say. And now it's three times a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, still 8 to 8.30. And like Felicia said, they save. So you can go and pick one. Almost all of them have a theme. One that I specifically 
like on the Fridays we do, um, today I rest, restore, and replenish my soul. And so that theme, sometimes it changes a little bit, my words change, but it's really for you. So much of our work is about other people or replenishing so we could do for others. This one, the whole focus is on you. And uh, Felicia spoke about the chakra system. If you're not familiar with the Hindu chakra system, <clears throat> excuse me, we have seven main energy centers and then 107 minor chakras throughout our body. But those main energy centers all have a different color. They're located differently, different locations along the spine, cerebral column. They are not physical. They are um, spiritual in nature. And, they, and this is actually where we do all of our work. We go into the chakras to really figure out and to discover where our pain is, what needs to be cleared and healed, um, what relationships need to be severed or reconnected to. And so, again, everything is about the self. None of my work is about anybody else. Other people will be affected because as you change your relationships with other people, including your spouses, your partners, your children, and your close friends, and you need to know that. I say this at the top of everything, that it's not a judgment or a bad thing. It's just we all go into relationships based on where we are at the time. And then you change. You decide to do something, whether it's with me or someone else, but you start to change and you start to grow. You start to do different things differently. And so people who don't know you in this different way, especially when they knew you in this other way, some will love it. Yay, what are you doing? Take me with you. And I was like, who are you? You know, so this is when you find yourself maybe separating or moving away or you know, something so simple. It's funny to me when I think about it, but there was one gentleman who talked about his hangout was Friday night with the guys from work. And he would have like a, a cabinet full of canned goods and he would just open food and just but, and then after doing one cleanse, he was like, oh, he can't even eat canned goods again. He stopped clubbing and he realized he didn't have any friends anymore because he was, excuse me, I still have a cold a little bit. He, all the people, his, all of his friends were going to the club and he wasn't going to the club anymore. But what was beautiful was at the end of this, he and his mother who had been estranged were now partners in an international on, uh, entrepreneur business, like uh, exchanging, uh, bringing uh, artwork from Africa to America and selling it. There was so many transitions in just that one cleanse. And so I say this to all of you that if it sounds good and sounds exciting, I should say I'm going to do a little public announcement. The Winter Solstice Cleanse registration closes this Friday, November 24th. Yeah. So if you're interested, please go to the website look and read again there are three different price points in addition to the individual cleanse package we have a community package this one you don't do independently you it is required that you do uh, participate in the four-hour orientation on sunday december 3rd and even if you pay for it but you don't show up you will not be able to go forward it is community based and then the third package is the same as the second with the community but you also can purchase a session with um, a holistic practitioner, whether it is an herbalist or um, a colon hygienist or a nutritionist, uh, a massage therapist, or yours truly, I do Reiki and I do private meditation. So that comes into your package, the third package. So we have a little something for everybody. Yeah. There is no payment plan. You have to purchase the package and again, by the 24th. So please make yeah. sure you uh, you register. And then also take down the, the website just so you can come on the morning meditation tomorrow, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 8 to 8.30. And if it's too early or you miss it, again, they save and you can do them anytime. But I do want to talk about uh, dancing into the light if we can before our time is up. Yeah. Unless you want to talk about something before we get to that, I'll defer yes, to you. Yes, yeah. a couple, couple more things because you, you just be glossing over some stuff. All right, so <laughs> Kevin Nafisa, okay, she does Reiki. Let me tell you, Reiki. Reiki, Reiki. I don't even know how to say it. See, she can't even drink this little water because she's just glossing over some stuff. 
So I did a, a Reiki, my, my friend Elena was like, oh, you have to, you know, get to session with her. I was like, okay, <laughs> because like my thing is once you start saying you want to kind of do some things, like she said, just starts falling around, right? So I'm like, you know, let me, you know, try, let me try this. And she's like, oh, okay, well, you could just, we could just have a session or you can have counseling with the session. And I was like, you know what, let's, let's go have a, have a little counseling. So after the little counseling, I'm already in tears. I was like, oh my, I just thought I was going to be talking. And in fact, I don't even think I really needed counseling. I was just like, you know, let me just talk to Reverend the Feast and see how things are going. At five minutes to it, I was like just in tears, just recognizing things about my life. Okay. I know you guys are sitting here thinking like, dang, she stayed in a lot of tears all the time. <laughs> but this time I was just, you know, thinking about, I was like, wow, there's some things I really, at the root of who I am, I need to really work through and change, right? So then we get onto the table. Now, I don't know what to expect because I've never had, and it's Reiki or Reiki? Reiki. Reiki. R-A-Y, okay. Reiki. Reiki. Mm -hmm. So I get onto the little table. I'm like, okay, this is nice. And, you know, the way that she is presenting here with the calmness, I know someone said that um, um, on here you know, it's very just a nice, just, it's just nice, calm, you know, so I think some music was playing on, it was warm, she wraps you up, and then she does the session, you close your eyes and do the session. I literally had to hold on to the table because I thought she was moving the table. And I thought like, I, I felt like I was on a boat just going down like the Hoppy River, literally just like this. And so afterwards, you know, She's like, oh, drink, you know, make sure you drink some water. And I'm like, what happened? And so when I talk to other people who've had, you know, um, have done uh, Reiki, they're like, wow, all that happened. I just, I just got some sleep when I was in my, you know, like it, it wasn't the same experience. And so, you know, that it's a, it's really nice when you're, you know, going through the cleanse to have access, you know, to this at a, a really good price point. And even the prices, you know, and I'm pretty sure, I mean, I'm not part of um, Reverend Nafisa's team, but I'm pretty sure everyone on her team's like, this is not priced correctly. <laughs> like it needs to be more money, you know, because of all the things that you not only, um, you know, get, but you have access to, mm -hmm. you know, sitting, you know, the, the, when we have the orientation, it's so nice because you're, 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 you're grouped up with other people who are all like, all of us are having the same intention at that time, you know, mm -hmm. and you develop friends, friends that you, you, you will mm -hmm. could possibly know forever, you know? Um, but it's just the, uh, you know, and then you didn't talk about the, every day you send an email out and the email is like, it's all about the email because the email is whatever. You don't even know what the email is going to be about until she writes it. And you're like, oh, that's what I needed. And it's, it serves as a meditation, you know, for yourself, um, a good journaling activity. <laughs> like it's, it's very, you know, and so like, it's, it's, it's so funny at the beginning of the cleanses, I thought it was all about the food, but as I went through the process, I'm like, the food is just, it's just, almost like just there. It's not even, mm -hmm. not even a thing. Um, but yes, family, I put the link in there again and you can go. Um, and you know, this website family, you know, I had never really been on your website like that. You have everything there. You have a lot of things going on and a lot of good information. So family, mm -hmm. please go to, um, uh, to, uh, to ethoh.org and sign up um, for your newsletter as well. Cause you have a newsletter too. Right. Yes, but it's not through ETHOH, it's through info at ETHOH. So through the um, through our constant contact, we'll send you a newsletter at the top of the month. Okay. Months. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, you have to click. Okay, yes. Go ahead. No, that's it. Oh. Just thank you for all of your um, insight and your, your holding on to the table. And you're right. For everyone, it's different. And I say that to everyone. Like people are referenced and they... So you, you're taking someone else's experience and that will influence whether you do something or not, but each one is different. And even for the individual, I would imagine, Felicia, if you came back now, your experience would be very different. Mm -hmm. You know, some things are in the beginning, it's just as overwhelming, like a tsunami. But now that you've been working on yourself and cleansing and clearing, you're, you're much clearer. You've released so much more emotionally. Your perspective is different. Your approach to life is different, to people is different, your consciousness is different. 
you might be one of those people who are, yeah, I'm just fall asleep on the table and just mm. go for the ride, you know. So everyone is different. Um, yeah. And I want to say about the price point, um, I know that it, we, did, we did raise our prices maybe two seasons ago. But for me, it's so important that I reach the grassroots audi audience. I cannot tell you how many people ask me, do you have a, you know, a different rate or can you gift or whatever? And so um, it has to be important enough for you and at a price point that you can, you can reach, that you can afford. Um, I did, we, I, we did raise the prices, like I said, two seasons ago. Um, and believe it or not, more people chose to do the individual not the group, even though I would think they would want to do the group because that was the the impetus that you yes. had such such a great group which started at the orientation and then became there are people who we used to have prayer partners that became prayer groups, but those prayer partners are still praying together five years later. Like you said, yes. the, the commitments and the connections yes. are so deep. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I know that Everything is in God's divine design and time. So uh, I, we had to raise our prices, but I don't want to raise them astronomically where people are, can, cannot afford, cannot afford yeah. them. So that's also important to me that people get served. So, um, yeah. yeah. So the cleanse coming up, winter solstice cleanse and uh, before the 24th, please register if you wish. Um, and the whole title is Become Fearless and Free and Shine Your Beautiful Light on the World. So this is the end of the year and we are celebrating, which is leading me into Dancing into the Light, five holy days and festivals of light, Christmas and Kwanzaa, Hanukkah, Three Kings Day. And we just celebrated Diwali a few weeks back. And um, all of these holy days or festivals have light in common and in what way, some way, how light was either encouraging, inspiring, leading, but always this idea of light overcoming the darkness and hope overcoming despair and love overcoming hate. So we're having a big event, our year in fun fundraiser on Sunday, December 10th, from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. at the uh, Andrew Friedman Home in the Bronx. Uh, and it's a full day, it starts with the African dance class with me, yours truly and live musicians, it will be streamed as well as in person. And oh, then we will move into, say it again. You're streaming it, oh, that's great. Yep, it will be just just the dance class, not the whole event. Okay. And and then uh, we'll move into our more meditative explanation of all the different five holy days and festivals of light will have beautiful tables set up and people to describe and speak about each one. Ominira, whose name you had a little difficulty with early, she's going yeah. to be our hostess with the mostest, explaining and guiding everyone through. And I'll do a meditation, what I call bridging the light from one to the next. And then from there, we'll move into our, our dance party. We'll have a live DJ and free food. Uh, all the different holy days will be represented in the food. And then uh, we'll have a, a raffle at 5.30 and we're finished by six. So. Even if you can't come, please. Uh, oh, right now we have a, a new, some new purchase uh, items to purchase. This is <laughs> yes. Angelina, seven day candle and a t shirt. Right now, if you purchase your uh, Black Friday sale, is going on through uh, Friday the 24th. And you can come up and pick up your items at the event and not to encourage a shipping fee. But after the 24th, you will encourage a shipping fee. So, you know, we're doing all these early bird specials and incentives to uh, make it easy for everyone. Mm -hmm. So please come in. You're welcome to make a donation if you love anything that you heard or see. Can't come, but would love to donate. All donations are tax deductible. And um, and then you're welcome to do private work with me, you know, on the website as well. If you go to the drop down button, it says uh, our founder, there are different links that will take you to more information about me and then another link that will take you to um, the private work, whether it's meditation, whether it's Reiki, anything that you're looking for. If I can help, I will. Yeah. And you know, um, I, I did have um, just, just two more questions. I like this idea of, you know, you talk about self-becoming. Mm -hmm. um, is this, you know, when people talk about self-becoming, is it, 
is, is this only like for women? Oh, no. <laughs> you know, you know, I, I mean, I know the answer to that, but a lot of times when people talk, you know, when they talk about this, they just, it's, it's you know, it's like we're the only people that need to do any healing. Or, um, yeah. Can you talk a little bit about yeah. that? Yeah. This is not women's work. You know, we know the song that says it's women's work, but no, it's people's work. And it almost doesn't make sense for the women to heal and not the men, you know? And so people are in pain, people, men and women. And until we heal, our children won't heal because our children are going to learn from us, home training, what they see, what you say, what you don't, no judgment, but just the children will learn what you teach them. And so we're seeing generations of children coming up being very loved because I'm older. I know I look good, but I'm 65. So my daughter is younger and then even people, her children. So um, not that my daughter has a child, but the next generation of Generation X and millennials, you know, their consciousness is very different than ours. And so, no, it's not women's work, it's people work. And so, we have, we have to be willing to do the work. And for many men, I want to say or older consciousness or older belief system, it is women's work. And even for women, you know, it's, they're just supposed to cater to or support the belief system of the religion or the culture um, or the way they don't want to upset the, the apple cart or make waves. And I want to say for everyone, you know, like myself, I was not seeking to do this work. It finds you. And I, I like to say my spiritual alarm clock went off. Mm. And once that alarm clock goes off, you cannot press snooze and go back to bed. You can't. No. You can try, but you can't. And you don't even realize that you've been coming to this again, becoming this moment until you're there. You don't even realize that the choices you've been making, things that you've been saying your whole life, there's, to me, there's no accidents when people show up at my doorstep or in a workshop or a cleanse. I tell you all the time, I don't lasso you and pull you in. And especially when there are people from such diverse backgrounds and communities come together, you're here to learn and to heal a certain something issue at this time with these people because you don't even know each other very mm -hmm. few of you know each other some of you do because from dance class or other meditation or something but a lot of you don't you don't and so you're here to do this work whatever the work is at this time so and i also want to say thank you again because it's true it doesn't matter if i have one person 10 people or a thousand people in the class you will get 100 percent of yeah. Reverend Nafisa every single time. Yes. Now, of course, the more people we have, the less you can speak, but you're right. I do my best to keep the groups even a little small so you can really talk and move through your issues and your challenges and even your your wonderful uh, uh, explorations and, and realizations about yourself. Look at that big smile. Like, it's kind of, <laughs> I laugh at Felicia because she always talks herself into her own answer. Like, Reverend, it starts there. And then if I just be quiet long enough, she, she's going to come to her own answer. And you have this great smile. It's beautiful. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It, you know, because I just think about, um, and also family, she had uh, some classes this year and uh, phase one and phase two. And, you know, like meditation classes. I was like, okay, how, you know, how hard can it be to learn how to meditate, you know? This could be easy, this, you know. And so we signed up for this class and I was like, oh, okay. And just because, you know, Reverend Nafisa is a professional mirror. She is a architect of self-development. I called her that last night and I was like, you're like an architect because not only does she have the blueprint but she's giving you tangible tools. And it's really up to you, like she said, for you to take them or not, you know, but once you know you have to take them when you don't take them you just now you just keep thinking about like i should have just you know <laughs> and so um you know family this idea of self-healing please um let me put back up your website i need for you guys to go on there 
there's something for everyone. Um, and you know, my last question, uh, Reverend Nafisa, it, it's really about like, when you think about divine timing and the teacher showing up, when, um, what, do you ever feel, okay, yeah, look, yeah, no, okay, yes. Do you ever feel like, or go around telling people like, oh, you know, you may want to try this, or I think it's time for you to do this, or is, is that something that you you normally do to, to help people? Like when you no. know they, they, need, they need it? No. Um, I have learned a long time ago to, to little preambles, like perhaps you want to consider, or did you ever try, you know, but not to tell you. I can look or see and say, oh, they're ready, or, you know, but mm -hmm. to tell you, uh, it may be very either intrusive or, or you can take it as intrusive or, um, or a lot of pushback because you know it's the truth. You don't expect somebody to see it, much less to speak on it, to say you should do this or why aren't you doing that. So I usually just let people know this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm offering, and you're welcome. Read the website, you know, and see if it if aligns with you. You have questions, give me a call. You know, I think people um, people like people respect that better. I'm respecting their space, their choice, their ability. Their, I'm sorry, not their ability, but their readiness or not. And so, yeah, no, I don't tell people. I see a lot of things, but I don't say anything. And sometimes silence is the best way. Even yeah. with all of all of the teacher, all of you, I, this is one one woman who she talks about doing I think one or two levels of the phases, and then the workshops, eight week workshops. And then I took off for a year. I went into seclusion. And when I left. I had just come, out, come back from India for six weeks and I went to Egypt for two and a half weeks. And then 9-11 happened and then I was down. God was like, stop dancing, go in, so I did. And she tells the story of when I stopped dancing and stopped teaching, she thought everything I said was a lie. Mm. But as the year unfolded, she realized everything I said was the truth. And I was so amazed at her courage that in front of about 25, a room of 25 people, she stood up and said this to us, like, I didn't believe anything you said, like you were saying earlier, because it's very hard to take that and translate to yourself. And this is why I call the workshops, they're not just meditation workshops, they're transformational workshops. So we're going to dig deep into what's in there what needs to be cleared or healed and then you know revealed so we can we can become our joy we can become the person that we want to be and, and be happy and happy doesn't necessarily HAPI happy doesn't necessarily mean more money or more material things of course we need those things i need those things we want those things but they cannot be the main core of our happiness because what happens when those things go away? Are you still happy or do you fall apart? And back to the question about why a ritual? When you have ritual in your, and you have alignment with yourself and with God and with each other, it almost doesn't have, it almost doesn't matter what else is happening in the world, almost. Because you're so centered in this alignment, you trust the divine design of God, even if everything around us is chaotic. It doesn't mean you don't participate, of course you do, but you don't judge it, you don't criticize it, or someone else for that matter. You know, We have a lot of that, we think our way is the best way, and we're faced with so many social issues, especially right now, but it's not other people, it's us, back to Gandhi, if you want peace in the world, it must begin with you. So what are you thinking? Are your thoughts full of peace? Mm. What are your words? Are your words vibrating peace? What are your actions? 
Are they filled with peace? You know, you don't have to go around the world right here in New York City. The homeless, the helpless, the mentally challenged. What is your response to them or reaction? And so this work is difficult because it's all about the self and it's about holding that mirror right here. This is Michael Jackson, right? Man in the, man in the mirror. Yeah. And are you really ready to see yourself? And sometimes, Felicia, it's very hard to see ourselves. We don't want to see it, none of us. And this is why I'll share this to say, if you really want to shift, ask God to reveal to you what you deny. Don't do it unless you're ready for God to reveal it to you. It will not be at a time when it's, okay, I'm ready, God, tell me now. It's gonna come on the train when you least expect it, you come at your job, walking down the street, driving, when your mind is not thinking about it and you least expect it, but that's when you're going to have an aha moment and maybe you'll bust out in tears or maybe you'll just be depressed or maybe in, You'll be joyful that you now you see it. But this work is challenging, it is, which is why community is so important. I wanna make sure I'm saying that. You know, you talked a little bit about it early and with the cleanses, it's just easier if you know you can call people, everybody gets a contact sheet, you get a phone number and an email. And it was tickling me one day, it was the last day of the workshop. And all of y'all were like, okay, give me your number. In the text, like, now why didn't y'all do that? eight weeks ago <laughs> but you didn't know each other but in eight weeks you revealed your hearts your mm -hmm. minds you got to know each other and now you're laughing and carrying on and couldn't wait to get each other's even though you had it in a sheet you just nobody ever looked at it but now you are yeah. so. and it starts day one like it, it doesn't even like yeah, day one, it, you you start hitting heavy, and it's like you know you look a little little Reverend Lisa. She's a nice little lady, you know, <laughs> but her little words <coughs> are very, powerful, um, especially when she's asking questions or, you know, or just talking or just observing something, and you're just like, oh my, man, you know, yeah. They used to call me Sister Sledge, and uh, we had one one sister was like. I'm not feeling the teacher today. You know, the earlier groups when they were like, they were still really close. We said, I'm not feeling the teacher today. So we laugh at those moments. And part of it was Felicia, especially back in the 80s or the early 90s when I started doing the work publicly. We didn't have this level of awareness, mm. not in 1987. No one was talking about ascended mastery or, you know, harmonica virgins or, you know, we weren't, you know, the self-healing. We didn't have Oprah and the Yamla yet on television telling us to take a bath with candles. And so by the time I started teaching publicly in 95, um, people actually surrounded me and said, we know you know something for real. When are you going to teach that? And that was my first workshop. Okay. And I would just listen to see what were they saying. And then, oh, time for the next workshop. Oh, time for the next workshop. And I'm saying this to say that um, that we're so steeped in our own belief systems, we have no idea that we're not healthy. We have no idea that there's another way because all we know is what we know. And again, we're older, we're 30, we're 40, we're 50 years old already. So we have a lifetime of habits. And then all of a sudden, like you say, this little lady comes along and says, well, one moment, please. Mm -hmm. So it's, only to help you to think and to really feel, is this really what you want? So many people would say things just by rote. And I would say, are you sure? That's all I would say. Are you sure? And by that third, are you sure? <laughs> you know? yeah. So this is why the work is hard. And this is also why I'm happy to be doing the work because I, I love seeing the transformation I love seeing your face, your smile, you know, hearing your lovely words, not for me, for you, because I know you have this huge following, your family, your films, you will affect so many people. I've learned a long time ago, it's not how many, it's who. One person will change the world, one person. So if 
if I can help you to steady yourself on this path or this course of learning to really love yourself. And loving yourself also means forgiving yourself. In fact, you took the last cleanse in the fall where the whole focus was on forgiving abandonment and rejection. And almost every year I write about us forgiving other people who hurt us. I think I only wrote one day out of nine about other people. Almost every day was about us forgiving ourselves. And then you sent me a text or Instagram post showing up for yourself. Somebody was talking about that. And we don't, you know, we, especially as parents, we'll take care of our kids and our spouses, our jobs, we'll volunteer at the church or the mosque or the temple, yeah. but we won't take a bath. We won't sit down and meditate for five minutes. You know, yeah. we won't go hug the tree. And, you know, COVID has helped me to take a half hour break and just walk to the park and sit in the sun for a half hour, even if it's cold, and then come back just to give myself a break from the computer, to go outside, to be in nature, to watch the kids, to hear them laugh, that balance. So we're constantly seeking balance and unfolding. And there's no arriving. you like, I've arrived, I'm done. You're not done. You will always become, there's always more, including for myself. And so the joy is in these moments of just sharing it with everybody. And yeah. hopefully you will, uh, join us for either Dancing Into the Light on December 10th yes. or the cleanse on, uh, I think it's uh, December 13th, 13th through the 13th through the uh, 21st. Yeah. Um, and, and but it, you don't have to pull it up, but Midnight Meditation for World Peace is uh, an evening meditation from 11 p.m. at night to 1 a.m. on Christmas wow. Eve. So... Oh. It's on the site too. As well. This is beautiful. Oh yeah, I just haven't started advertising it, but yeah, it's beautiful online, uh, and we don't meditate the whole time. We sing, we talk, we unfold. You know, again, back to peace. In order to be really peaceful with yourself, you have to discover what's in between you and your peace. What's what do you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. Yes, yes. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, you go. I, you, please. No, I'm just agreeing with you. I'm like your little cheerleader in the background. I'm like, yes, because that's the whole piece. Mm -hmm. It's like, how do you get to peace? What's between you? And that's, therein lies the challenge that unless you're really real, willing to be blatantly honest with yourself, again, back to that honesty, it may cause a lot of disruption in your home, at your job in your religious institution, with your best friends. And so that fear of loss, you know, the fear of the unknown, all of those reasons will keep us from not venturing. Is it fair to say that we are our own healers? Absolutely. You are your own healers. But I also say that, that you need a roadmap. You also need a teacher. If we could all do it on our own and not need a teacher, then we would there'd be no need for me. And there would have been no need for my teachers. Mm. But their goal is not to be my teacher forever, it's to plant me on my own two feet and set me on my way. Yeah, I remember when we started asking you questions and you were like, well, what do you think? I was like, oh. <laughs> it's like, no, we wonder what you think. You're like, no, no, what do you think? And then we was like, oh, man, we gotta think for ourselves now. But exactly. it's been, um, yeah, it, that's, been, that's been very helpful. That's been very helpful. This is from um, Lori. She's actually coming with us to um, to Egypt. She's been our, our supporter for a very long time. But she wanted to know, what, what do you feel is the best way to handle criticism from others that will not understand or desire to embrace spirituality over religion? Don't even try. Mm. Don't even try. There's nothing... There's nothing for you to convince anybody of, just the opposite. Back to unconditional love. People believe what they believe. The best way you can teach your children or anyone is to be who you are. If you are a spiritual person, let people see you in your spiritual way. You don't ever have to talk about religion. You don't have to go there with people. When people all the time talk to me on the train, I just let them. 
they're not interested in what I have to say. They want me to hear what they have to say, and I let them. And the same thing, like let go of the need to control or to make someone understand you. That's the hard one because we, don't you get it? Don't you get me? Now, I'm a woman who wears white every day, all day long, every year, all year long. You know, somebody, I'm sure they looked me up and down that she didn't get the memo past Labor Day. You know, you should be out of white by now. So people <laughs> have all kinds of thoughts. I, they look me up and down, they look at my feet, they look at everything. And I'm just like, see ya, you know. And then other people like, you're so refreshing. It's so wonderful to see you in white during the winter time. Mm -hmm. So everyone is functioning from their own perspective, everyone. If you read the book by Don Miguel Ruiz, The Four Agreements, the second agreement is not to take things personally. Everyone is functioning from their own perspective. You function from your perspective. What is your perspective? And you be your own light. You don't have to convince anybody. Yeah. I, I remember when you said that to me, you mm -hmm. know, and I remember I was in like midway in an argument and you were like, what does it matter? Like, you start thinking about that, mm -hmm. you know, and that's actually become a practice of mine. Mm -hmm. I'm like, it doesn't even, it doesn't mm -hmm. matter. Um, it, it only matters if you want to control the situation yeah. and to sh prove that you're right. Either you have the knowledge or the right way or it's my way. Yeah. And when you don't have the need to control or to convince, then you just be. And it's okay to let people be who they are. Now, certainly this doesn't mean allow people to hurt you or your family or, no, that's not what I'm saying. So you make yourself crazy trying to argue with someone who, they're not going to hear you at all. They don't want to hear you. Like I said on the train, people don't want to hear what I have to, they don't ask my opinion. They might ask me one question. What do you think about, and I said, well, what do you think? And boom, there's never a breath in what they have to say. They just, I'm an easy person to just listen to them. And I do. And I also listen to people who are seeking and I get bring it back to them. There was one gentleman, he was a ex-pro ball player and he had this whole treatise on what he wanted to do with the kids in his community. And he still had connections to some professional ball players. And well, who should I really ask? I said, no one, do it yourself. And he stopped and he looked at me like, he never even considered that. So you have a story. You are a pro ball player. You made some choices that garnered some results that weren't the greatest, but here you are doing something really great for your community. I think the kids would love to hear that story. Absolutely. And I got off the bus. And he just looked at me like, miss, <laughs> you know. Yeah. But that's the whole point. I don't need to be right. I don't need to convince you. I don't need to answer your questions. I need to inspire, I need to inspire you to find your own answers and do what you feel is right for you. Now he still may have gone and gotten some celebrities to do the, the center or open it or something, or maybe he did really do it himself. I don't know. I never saw him again. But that's my that's my philosophy. I'm going to help you. Sometimes people do ask me and sometimes people are stuck. You've been there. And I'll say, I'm going to help you. I'm going to say this to you. And then I see a, a huge shift because you needed that. Back to the person who about needed, do you need a, a healer or a teacher? You do every now and then like a parent. You need the, the mother, the father to help you to learn how to tie your shoe, to learn how to use the bathroom, to learn how to dress yourself, to learn how to eat, to learn how to speak. But then they step back and they let you tie your shoe, eat, use the bathroom on your own. You know, we want to inspire and encourage our children or each other to really think for ourselves. And more than think, to really feel. And I want to make sure I'm saying this to everybody that some things, when you think about it, it makes perfect sense but when you feel about it, you're not feeling this. Even though everybody else in the family is doing this or everybody you know is doing this, mm. for you it's, it's not right. And this is where, again, your meditation practice and your ritual comes in 
in handy because that's where you find your inner strength to speak your truth, to speak up. You might be the only one wearing white or the only one saying no when everyone else is saying yes, or you go this way and everybody's going that way, but you're too afraid to. Or when you know that God is walking with you. You know, there's so many wonderful adages, but my rod and my staff, and you're walking with grace around you, however you reference that, there is no need to fear. None. 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 I'm with you, Marty. Amen. Amen. Great. <laughs> yes. Okay, family. Um, I want to make sure that, uh, let me put this right up there. Thank you, Reverend Nafisa. Um, You're welcome. Just thank you for coming on. I hope this is not the only time you come on and visit us. You got to come on more often. Now that, yep. we, now that you came one time, now you got to keep coming. Yep. I do have pleasure. Once a month, let me know when you're yeah. ready to have yeah. me back. And yeah. it can be even different um, format where people come in with questions or yes. you know, let's do it. Let's do a meditation. Let's do something that's interactive. Whatever your your constituents, your people would like to see, oh, we can make that happen. So of course, that's you. what we do. No, thank you, thank you, <laughs> thank you, and thank you all for allowing me to come into your homes, your your tablets, your phones, your computers, and and to share this with you. And I hope, um, especially as we go into the new year, that the holiday season can be very difficult for people. You know, people die, people make transitions, people are alone. Um, and just to remember that you're never alone um, and that the way you find your peace, P-E-A-C-E, -E, is to hold still with yourself and to be clear, crystal clear about what you need and what you want and to ask that of the universe. As the veil, as we like to say, between the worlds is thinning and has thinned, we're seeing the manifestation of our thoughts and our words much quicker. So this is a good time to be very mindful of what am I saying? Don't ever beat yourself up or live in guilt or shame. Take some time to really forgive yourself, have that good old ugly cry and be done. You know, have that hard conversation with someone and be done. Go into the new year with a wide open heart, wide open mind. Uh, ready to serve humanity in whatever way you, you do, simply by being who you are, unapologetically, as the kids say, and and full with grace, with God's grace. Just go and have a beautiful life. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. You. Yes, thank you. Thank you, family. Please uh, make sure you support. And listen, I'm going to be in that cleanse, and I'm going to be, um, uh, I'll be there, um, at the um, at the event on the tenth as well in the, in the morning, well that like early afternoon portion. So family, please um, please make sure you support. And um, I want to thank everyone for the um, cash donations as well. You you know like the money that you guys give us is so that we can produce uh, shows like this and bring like Reverend Nafisa in the house. That's what's up. So family, make sure listen. This is like uh, um, if you were just sitting at your house thinking, you know, I don't like some things in my life or I don't like my situation. And then you just happen to look at the happy talk. So usually we bring on, you know, every you know black history studies and, and, and all those pieces. And this this right here, um, you know, before it's, it's another way to learn about yourself. History is one mm -hmm. way. But then when you start really looking at yourself and becoming I like that becoming. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're gonna take that for Michelle Obama. That's it. That's absolutely <laughs> right. Absolutely. Yeah, when you're becoming, um, mm -hmm. you know, it's super important. So this is like the little, it's like the little pebble, you know, being thrown at you, like, hey. And this is, listen, I'm not gonna even um, pretend to say, oh, it's be easy and all this stuff, but it's it's definitely rewarding. Mm -hmm. You know, it's definitely it feels good when you are going through something and you have a bag of, of tricks, a bag of tools, you know, and, and support of each other. You're not alone ever. Yeah. I, you know, that's one of the, I was thinking about that um, when I was thinking about opening up the show and I was like, well, should I say this or should I talk about my spiritual team? Because I know I, I was talking to this woman at work and she had asked me um, something and I said, oh, I have a spiritual team. She's like, well, why would you? I was like, no, no, no. There's like a team of people, <laughs> you know, like there's no way in this world 
that I don't know if you could do this by yourself, you know, and definitely uh, Reverend Nafisa, you are part of that team. Um, so I really appreciate you. Okay. Thank you for bringing me in a circle. Oh, all right, family. Um, okay. So Reverend Nafisa, I'm going to put you in the back. Like don't hit, don't like click off yet. Just I'm going to close the show, but you stay back there for a second. Okay. Okay. Thank right. you everyone. Thank, thank you so much. Oh, thank you. And, um, and all your, 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 I see your whole family is up here. The ETHOH, um, crew is in the house too. Amani is in the house. Um, everyone. Okay, fam. Uh, I want to um, just go over a couple little things before we close out. Number one, I'm going to put this up one more time um, because I expect to see you guys at the cleanse or at the dance event. And I think someone asked about the cleanse. Yes, it's virtual. So there's like no excuse really. And she sends that beautiful package. And we didn't, we said a couple of things that's in the package, but listen, there's a tincture that you have to take every morning. Um, and it's all comes, you know, there, a feather, um, she shows you how to use it along with sage, um, a candle, uh, bath salts. And like I said, the nice letter, the, the letter is really, really special. Um, soap, little gloves so you can scrub off the day. Like everything is in this kit. So family right here, E-T-H-O-H, that is, you, you need to make sure that, um, that you sign up. Um, they're really nice. And listen, if you guys don't sign up, that's okay too. Because if it's if it's only me in there, I get to just sit with Reverend Nafisa the whole time and just talk because she shows up for one person or for like a hundred people. So family, make sure um, uh, that you definitely uh, support her. Also, fam, um, right here we are. Um, like I said before, we have sold uh, out of our original trip to Egypt. Let me tell you. Um, sold out quickly, but we have another event, you know, in Egypt. So we were initially going there for 10 days and we are taking people. And I see um, a lot of them are in the house. Uh, Tashi, uh, Lorenzo, I saw Lori, um, and they're all traveling with us. Right. And so that's for the 10 days. And so once we sold out, we were like, we still want to bring more people. And so we have an eight day trip, which is a little bit less, you know, it's less expensive. Um, but you still get all the goodies. You get the main events. We have an Ahapi Gala. We have our own ship that we will be selling, um, um, selling up the Nile on. Um, we have our, um, we're gonna you know, have some economic classes. We have, I forgot to talk about the live performances. We have um, the, the Honorable Miss Ruby Hayes will be um, performing along with Jamar Milton. Um, we're gonna have a couple you know, parties in the evening. Uh, we have some um, beautiful exercise uh, with Wendy on the deck of the ship on the Hoppy River. It's like, how, I tell you, it's going to be nice. And plus, we're, we're hitting all the spots, but we're really talking about this economic piece. It's really, you know, important that we um, stress to people when we talk, when we think about what we, you know, when we're looking at the economy today, we just look at the whole construct of economics started at the Hoppy River. And so, you know, family, if you can make it happen right there, you go to um, ICAT Tours um, and get, uh, you know, so you can get more information. You can also sign up and, and um, put in your deposit right here, ICATTours.com. Okay, family, um, I, think, I think that is it. Um, and so, um, yes, uh, Mr. Jackson is asking about the trip. Yeah, I had tours, and the dates are February 17th through February 24th. Okay, and you can go to happyfilm.com and get information or I had tours. Okay, fam. All right. Um, okay, so I think that's it. So, again, uh, you know, we'll be back with, um, um, you know, with an an another happy, enlightening installment of, um, of Happy Talks. But until then, peace and blessings. I don't know what we can talk about in this nation without talking about white superiority, honestly. Who defines the meaning of God also defines the relationship between economy and God. African Americans spent $1.3 trillion last year, making us the 16th wealthiest nation in the world. Why have we not turned those riches into wealth to develop our community?